Welcome to Ra Online. Uh, today we are going to talk about the most important spotter first session on spotter for head and neck. The spot identifications, these are all cadavers which has been used during this discussion and these are dissected cadavers. So we will be showing you the spotters uh, on the dissected real cadavers uh, and the pictures has been taken from a dissection hall uh, in the cadavers. So let's go to the first slide and this is a dissected cadaver of head and neck as you can see and here we have shown the neck region, we have highlighted the neck region here more and in the neck region there are three spotters or three identifiers which has been actually labeled. So coming to the first identifier uh, for today is the external carotid artery. You can see over here this is the common carotid artery which comes up in the neck. It is one of the content of the uh, uh, carotid sheath, also a content of the uh, carotid triangle and this is getting divided over here at approximately at the upper border of the lamina of the thyroid cartilage into an external carotid artery and an internal carotid artery and this division is very clearly visible over here. So what can be put as a spotter is we will come to the following sessions in which we will be also seeing the other spotters. Now here we have identified the external carotid artery with this arrow and what is important is you will be also given a tag question. Sometimes with the tag question we can identify the uh, spotter. So the tag question most commonly asked for an external carotid artery is definitely the beginning or where it is uh, getting formed. So I have put up the tag question answers which are like cues over here like it is formed at the upper border of thyroid cartilage and posteriorly this corresponds to the disc between the C3 and C4 vertebra. So that is the level where the external carotid, these are the key points. So if you remember these, these are also important when you write a theory answer, but these are very important in your spot discussion or spotter tag question, it will be asked as a tag question. So you have identified the external carotid artery once it is put as a spotter, this has been pinned or it will be tied as a spotter and once you have identified the tag question can also be the branches in the carotid triangle. So external carotid artery is the artery which is actually having branches in the neck. It gives branches in the neck, it actually enters the parotid gland and also gives the terminal branches within the parotid gland which is in the face. Now within the carotid triangle, if the identifier is put in the neck, the most common question is asked is name the branches of the external carotid artery within the carotid triangle. So that can be actually remembered if you can remember that with the help of a mnemonic which is folas. So if we go through this mnemonic folas, we have the uh, facial artery, then occipital artery, lingual artery and ascending pharyngeal and superior thyroid artery. So these are the branches which are given off in the neck region of the uh, that is in the within the carotid triangle by the external carotid artery. So the other branches will be above the carotid triangle. So this is a very important thing you can actually be asked as a tag question for external carotid artery can be the level of formation or at the level of termination of the common carotid artery the level is important so you should know where it is exactly and the next question which can be asked is the branches within the carotid triangle. Another very important question can also be asked is what are the terminal branches? So I told you the external carotid artery will start in the neck, it will cross the carotid triangle, it will enter within the parotid gland. Within the parotid gland it gives the superficial temporal and the maxillary artery. So another important question which can be asked to you is the terminal branches. So that can be also a uh, spotter question, uh, tag question. So terminal branches of external carotid artery, I will come to it but just to uh, finish it off over here or complete it. So you have the maxillary artery and the superficial temporal artery, superficial temporal artery. So these are the uh, spotter uh, question which commonly uh, be asked uh, whenever we are spot identifier, we are putting it as a spotter external carotid artery. So definitely the structure will be tied or pinned or identifier will be put. We will ask you identify the structure. 
you have to write it is an external carotid artery and next a tag question will be given to it as what are the branches in the carotid triangle that can be asked or name the branches in the carotid triangle or name its terminal branches or name it or give the position at which it starts so you have to tell that it begins at the upper border of thyroid cartilage opposite the c3 and c4 vertebra so these are the common um, so terminal branches is also given so common questions which are normally asked for the external carotid artery whenever we are giving it as a spot identifier okay so now coming to the next spotter we have the internal carotid artery now you can see over here we have spot identified the internal carotid artery also as you know that the internal carotid artery does not give any branches in the neck so the artery can be identified by by seeing that it is actually placed more posteriorly and definitely does not give any branches in the neck so and it is also also remains a content of the carotid sheath it does not pierce the carotid sheath and it continues upwards and enters the cranial cavity so basically the internal carotid artery if it is given as a spot identifier in the neck it can be asked that tell the distribution where it is distributed how does it enter into the skull or into the cranial cavity so enters through the carotid canal this is very important so it enters through the carotid canal terminal branches can be asked because the internal carotid artery has no branches in the neck the terminal branches are mainly the anterior and the middle cerebral arteries which are given within the cranial cavity internal carotid artery also has a relation with cavernous sinus because it is it actually passes through the cavernous sinus and makes a siphon that is a shaped uh, loop okay and then it comes out so a shaped loop it forms and it comes out of the cavernous sinus and it is also related once it enters the carotid canal it is also related to the foramen lacerum it crosses the foramen lacerum superiorly and then only it enters within the cavernous sinus these are some of the relations of the internal carotid artery